Hello and welcome to uh, the Cooperative Fireside Chat. Uh, before we begin to talk all things cooperation and game development, uh, we'd like to pay our respects and acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land upon which we are meeting. Uh, so uh, we, I am phoning in from the uh, uh, land of the Gadigal of the Eora Nation uh, and Maze. I'm on Bunarong country from the Kulin Nations. We pay respect to the elders, past and present, and acknowledge that there has never been a treaty, that the land has never been ceded, and the occupation is still ongoing. Uh, and with that, uh, I would like to invite uh, you, Maze, to tell us a bit about your co-op, Ghost Pack. Um, well, my name's Maze Wallen, my pronouns are they, them, and I am the audio typical indie one person audio department for ghost pattern um who are making <coughs> who are making way with strand um we started off as a company so owned by jason and russ who are the two co-founders um oh, maybe 20 i don't know when they founded it maybe 2013 okay. or 20 some well, maybe, maybe I later. thought you were about to say 20 years ago, and I'm like, wow, this no. this, this co-op has pedigree. Oh, gosh. <clears throat> it feels like it could have been 20 years ago. Um, and then in um, 2014, um, Goldie and I and Georgia also all came onto the team. Um, and it remained a, it's, it's remained a company since then. But over the last couple of years, we've started figuring out our transition to a co-op. And that's come up really kind of organically in how we work together and also how we make business decisions and game decisions around Wayward Strand. Um, so, yeah, that transition from a company to a co-op hasn't been like the easiest thing. And it's also something that we've, as we can discuss, something that we've um, struggle to like keep at the top of our mind while we're doing lots of other things so yeah um tell us about your co-op in fluorescent games all right so uh i am the producer for Inflorescent games my name is mateus Simovich, but most people know me as Taya. uh and yeah we're of compared to uh uh the uh ghost pattern we are uh we are very new um, so we literally had our proper formation meeting uh, last month. Um, we are a team composed of five people, uh, and I'll talk about them all in due course. But uh, yeah, we're, we're currently in the process of doing our proper formation and, and properly solidifying um, our, ourselves as a, as a trading entity, so with which we can get an ABN and apply for loans and things. Um, before that, we had a dry run. Um, in 2020, uh, which was, uh, I believe we all agree in hindsight, a terrible time or a terrible year to decide to start a venture. Um, but we got through it. Um, so we started the co-op with uh, five people uh, that uh, were interested in sort of tr giving, a, giving a test run for, for a co-op. Um, so we were all we had this plan where we would work each on for half the year on individual projects and then work together on a, on a group project together. Um, and yeah, so that's essentially carried on through. So the main project of, uh, of the Inflorescent Games Co-op is currently the uh, group project we were, uh, we had assembled last year. We've had people swap in and out um, and we have this new and wonderful team composed of myself, Matthew Lucas, Damon Nichols, Albi Amakir, Jay Tan, and Maze, I believe you are also uh, uh, one of our contracted audio, or our contracted audio person on one of our projects. Yeah, um, and, you know, that's pretty interesting. And we'll, we'll talk about, um, yeah, how to approach contractors and things also. Um, the first thing that we wanted to talk about was that that set up state that we've both alluded to. Um, so the differences between starting from scratch and um, from transitioning a company. So I guess some of that paperwork is a little bit, it's more than a company, um, which you can do pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, 
Um, but yeah, would you like to outline um, that process? There's kind of yeah. two rounds, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. So there's the... So uh, for us, we've basically had to give in, like, uh, not give in, but provide uh, to fair trading uh, New South Wales. Uh, I assume that in Victoria it'll be fair trading Vic. Um, but yeah, basically we um, we had to provide a financial disclosure statement and also uh, a, co a copy of our cooperative rules, which is essentially like a company constitution, right? Um, so we had to have a good long chat with all of ourselves about like, you know, how to navigate these things. Um, uh, so the financial disclosure statement was much simpler because it was like, how much money do you have? Next to nothing. How much money do you plan to make? Break even. Uh, so that was fairly straightforward. Um, but uh, with regards to the rules, it was quite interesting because we had to discuss things like, okay, well, how are we actually going to navigate stuff like uh, consensus decision making uh, formally? Uh, so that's uh, where, for people who don't know, consensus is where you try and get everyone on the same page to agree to a decision. Um, as opposed to majority decision making, where you are uh, essentially, yeah, you know, everyone in the majority votes for something and that's the decision that gets taken. Cons uh, consensus is a bit different. Um, and so formalizing that and saying and putting in mechanisms for how to resolve issues if it's like there's a proper gridlock and how do we sort of work out um, you know, in what circumstances will we allow a majority or in what circumstances will we allow a board um, to sort of make decisions. So we currently have uh, our full co-op is five members, our board is three. Uh, the board can be all of the members of the co-op uh, in case you're interested. Uh, the reason that we have three is because we only have three cooperators who actually want to be on a board. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so that's essentially, um, you know, how we're divvying up um, decision making as well right so for the people who are very interested and, and want to follow along with like the admin parts it's not that fun but it has to be done and some people have strong opinions and that's really good um, yeah you know we we let them sort of take the reins and when it comes to big decisions like we get make sure we get everyone's input um, but the day-to-day -day sort of running and and signing of checks and and managing bank accounts and 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 things like that that's uh how we sort of divvied that up. Uh, anyway, this is that was a bit of a that was a bit of a ramble of like here's yeah. how we run this, here's how we did this. But um, yeah, so yeah. so once you submit those two pieces of paperwork, um, then in Victoria at least uh, they become approved, hopefully, or you get some feedback or something else. There's also a lot like a lot of bodies around which will help you with those paperworks because those yeah. two are probably the hardest ones to like be like you know yes this the financial disclosure for us we kind of frame it as like um if someone's becoming a worker owner this is the fin financial stuff that they're getting into you know mm -hmm. um we have spent this much and these people owe that and this is how yeah. uh our profits are divvied up and this is where our money has come from and things like mm -hmm. that which, you know, is similar to a company. Like, people want to yeah. know what what debts or whatever or loans mm. do we have and um, yeah. how is money going to be or has been split, you know, what yeah. ongoing relationships do we have. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... so I was just going to... I was just going to ask, I'm interested to know, since uh, your studio has been a bit more sort of uh, developed in the scene and I assume has other projects that have been sort of released before, did you list them as assets as well? And how did you, how did you value them if you, if you had them listed? Well, this is actually our first project as, as a studio. So way with ah. Strand, if, you know, some people will be familiar that this has been in development for a long time. Mm. Um, and, one of the complications is that like a lot of hours have been racked up mm. um, so that's one of the things that people should be aware of if they join mm. um, is that you know there's been a lot of unpaid work there's um, also been a lot of paid work you know mm. um, and <sighs> that being like okay so it's kind of kind of debt um, mm. <clears throat> And, you know, 
from our profits, we want to pay back the unpaid hours, um, mm. but without interest, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, people can be can be aware of that at what rate that mm. we're paying it back and things like that. Um, yeah. At the same time, that, that also means that kind of a lot of people have invested money mm. in, in money and time, actually. It's been mm. little, quite a lot of both. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, then yeah. there's also, you know, things like uh, recently the R&D incentive has become a little bit more welcoming for uh-huh. games. Yeah. Mm. Um, so that'll be another interesting spin. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Yeah. But, you know, all these kinds of things. And mm. like, yeah, IP um, is also something to think about. I don't know if we've put that into our financial... I'm not on so, the financial bit. That's what um, mm. Russ and Jason do, mostly Russ. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so once we mm. uh, submit those, then mm. with the help, I was going to say, of people like the Co-op Federation who are based mm. in New South Wales but are um, pretty supportive of every state. And then here also we've got um, Earth Workers and some other really wonderful co-ops that, you know, part of that, um, one of the principles of co-ops, right, um, mm. is cooperation amongst co-ops. So, mm. you know, we all want people to start co-ops and, and um, start spreading the, the love. So there's a lot of help. Um, and I think that, you know, both you and I would, would love to help other people start co-ops too. Absolutely. Um, anyway, so, yeah, you can get help with that paperwork then the government body hopefully approves it and then um you have to submit the next piece of paperwork which is more about the people mm. right is that the same yeah. as South Wales? yeah yeah so we we had that all kind of bundled together so we oh, okay. had the sort of c4 which uh was a specific form that like covered um you know, not just the rules, but who's essentially going into it. And everyone has to sort of essentially sign off on it. Mm. So for us, that was a little bit more streamlined, I'm guessing. Than... So, I mean, like, when it comes to, like, knowing about the people, what is it specifically that, like, uh, that the sort of Vic process requires of you? Or is um, it just... Yeah, it's the people in their roles and that they're mm. entering into this consensually, you know, it's yeah. like a wedding. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, like a big poly capitalist yeah. wedding or not <laughs> well kind of capitalist. yeah anyway. it's it's in the capitalist system so yeah. of course uh, but yeah no i ah oh, man so like something that i'd be interested okay so with ghost pat you're all going to be working together on like collective projects together right yes so do so for instance because you're doing audio and making music and things like that do you sort of have any provisions for your own right to the music or anything? Um, we've spoken a little bit about that. And, you know, one cool thing about co-ops is that um, all of the rules and things like that are really flexible. You know, you can just rewrite them and we can all vote on them and then done. New rule change. Um, if, there, if it's a big rule, you still have to submit it um, into the mm. government body again. Um, but if it's like a constitutional or a charter rather than mm. those specific rules, um, mm. then, you know, it's very flexible. Um, so, yeah, we've talked about, uh, you know, so I should be able to sell albums. Um, Goldie and Aspen also uh, should be able to sell their jewellery, t-shirts, posters, you know, these sorts of amazing things that those two Mm. artists make. Um, Jace was talking about, you know, he almost wrote a book on some Unity, um, the job system or something. So, you Mm. know, he should be able to sell that too. Mm. Um, So, yeah, there's a bit of that kind of thing. (laughs) Um, And there's also, you know, this importance of... I guess it's more about that um, moral right Mm. where, you know, people should have a say of how wayward strand assets are used. Mm. So, you know, um, maybe the team would not be supportive of wayward strand music being used in an advert for BP, 
you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Or, you know, I mean, it's not not so easy to assume also, right? Because yeah. maybe the time is that, like, yeah, if May's put that um, million dollars straight back into Wayward Strand and we made our next game with it, then you know what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, so I think that's, um, you know, mm. that kind of flexibility in in a co-op is something that um, we have over companies a little bit where, you know, it's okay yeah. to not nail things down. Um, yeah. And it's, yeah, it's fundamentally a discussion and you have exactly. more of a voice than you would in a company, right? Yeah. Because if I you know, got a job at one of the big studios and I was like, hey, I made this really awesome thing. Can I, I don't know, like do some more stuff with it? Uh, unless it's making money for them directly, they'll probably say no. Or sometimes they will just say no for the hell of it. Uh, hooray for the arbitrary exercise of power. Um, but yeah, so like we have our own like division of like- That person's IP. been voted off the island. Oh no. <laughs> Okay, well, I mean, no, I was going to say that, like, for us specifically, idiosyncratically, like, in fluorescent games. Um, so we have, like, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we were working on individual projects and group projects as mm. part of a cooperative. Mm. So as part of our discussion, we decided that we would differentiate IP in terms of who would own it. Cool. Um, uh, in case of like a co-op wind up. Well, we're still all together, it's still held collectively and we still mm. all sort of make decisions, mm. but we generally defer to the person who's like, um, so uh, the viewers will see that we have a logo for UFO Tofu Hex, uh, UFO Tofu rather than um, in Flares and Down the Bottom. That's because that's our new project that we will be releasing sometime this year, very soon, very exciting. It is a sequel to a game that's already out. Uh, it's a wonderful uh, puzzle game where you make visual palindromes. But that is also an individual project by one of our cooperators, Albi. Um, and Maze is also working on the audio, so you can look forward to that there. Um, but in case of a co op wind up, um, you know, we will sort of uh, transfer the, the intellectual property rights to Albi. Um, we'll also, uh, we've also had provisions for, for instance, like uh, because Jay has done some of the artistic work there, that we'll give them um, some of the intellectual property rights uh with regards to sort of that because yeah, like we all worked on it as a as a cooperative kind of thing which is a little bit different to sort of uh maze uh, who is working as a contractor on that project and that's going to get even more interesting yeah uh, yeah so we deal with contractors um they uh because of the publishing and funding um stuff that we've had often those require the business Sometimes they require a company um, uh, that they require the business to own all of the IP. Um, so with our contractors, we do own all of the IP, but con they also get a um, revenue share from a specific pool. I think the, the number goes up and down and we get people to re-sign contracts and things like that. Um, you know, as as a union rep, it's always a better deal. Um, yep. But uh, I think the pool at the moment is some, it's either 15 or 30, bloody hell, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. uh, that gets paid out um, to contractors out of profits. Yeah. Yep. Um, and it is, it's almost all contractors, um, but some of the consultants you know it's that's the sort of interesting line for us that we haven't been able to figure out completely um is you know when people do just a few hours of work should we give them revenue share or not um you know they get credit and everything they're in the credits and all of that yeah, well you say of course but um a lot of oh lot i mean of look if you do that <laughs> Oh, yeah, but that's breaking the law. Uh, I assume we're not going to be discussing that as like a genuine sort of approach to running a business. Is that breaking I mean, the law? It is. You have to you have to credit people who work on, on projects unless they specifically uh, specify otherwise. I believe that's part of moral rights, I believe. Mm. They so, need to sign that away in contracts or something. 
they you cannot uh they have to you have to specifically they have to ask you directly um you know do you not want to be credited uh, or do you want to be credited and you have to specifically state no you can't sell away that moral right because it is a moral right anyway sorry we ran a, we ran uh we ran some workshops on these um we did. but yeah <laughs> um uh, and yeah no so it's yeah um Anyway, sorry, I didn't so, mean yeah, to like, so that's, kind of watch that. Yeah, that's how we deal with contractors. Um, they don't necessarily need to become a part of the co-op. Um, yeah. We are, we have had discussions about like, you know, um, making a sort of village commune of artists, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, where, um, yeah, we do, you know, because when you first make a co-op, one of the little things that are sort of scary is, um, you know you look at the different types of co-ops and some of them mention that membership must be open yeah. um and you know that's all fine for um mm -hmm. retail co-ops and things like that like supermarkets oh, or bookshops or things that you know or um banks even um you know you sign up become a member done you start investing yeah. Yeah. in them um but for a studio it's a bit like well no <laughs> yeah um and anyway that's that's optional that thing yeah. that's more designed for those other things um yeah so it's the difference if, if you don't mind me getting nerdy again yeah, cool. um it's the difference between distributing cooperatives which are the ones that i believe uh you and i are forming mm. um which are essentially cooperatives that are designed to make a profit and to to sell a product or a service and and yeah basically uh run as a business that makes money but that fundamentally you know it's run by the workers that are working there and supports them uh, whereas a non-distributing is a bit more like perhaps uh, the local cops that people are more familiar with where it's like oh yeah. they sell food and things and yeah. it's nice yeah. and you buy a membership and yeah yeah uh, and you could also have I think there's a like a publishing co-op yeah yeah so and people that's... do make like hybrids of the producing publishing co-op also mm, um, mm. so some studios might fit into that kind of hybrid system yeah yeah um, and again, like it's all super flexible, you know, mm. Um, mm. which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that. Um, you can also have like different kinds of memberships of a cop. So maybe these contractors could become like silent members or something like that. Mm. Um, but then for us, you know, we're we're also like, you know, we love to have lots of voices. Like if someone has mm. an opinion you know mm. which often often no one has an opinion like mm. <laughs> you know yeah yeah some like that's kind of the reality people when they think about cops they're like oh this is so many meetings so many opinions i don't want other people's opinions on stuff but i'm like you know <laughs> people know that i'm making the music and i'm the the most qualified <laughs> you exactly know? um and you know goldie is making the art and Mm -hmm. um and aspen does lots of technical art you know what all about exactly up a bit like i don't have an opinion on most of the things that those people <laughs> yeah. do i'm like yes that's if you think that's good yes so you know for us mm. it's very like you know if a contractor did have an opinion about something and they felt that they should express it then yeah. we would love that, you know, because mm. it's like, yes, cool, you know, please tell us this mm. opinion um, that you think that we should hear, you know, really mm. ready for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's, you know, I think also um, because of the history of how we were working together for so many years, um, mm. we can sort of see that play out, you know, um and we can be confident that that's happening and if that yeah. isn't happening then we do need to shake things up and we do yeah. need to formalize um that part there are other things that don't happen naturally and we do need to formalize it you know yeah yeah um and that i think that's really good for us that we have such a history and such a culture mm. that's been like this is how we do things <laughs> you know yeah 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 so that's good that you've got like you know, you already have 
so uh you know talking about like informal versus informal power like mm -hmm. um you know when it comes to setting up so if anyone listening to this is keen on setting up their own sort of cooperative uh you know think about sort of things like informal versus formal power so you know if you had contractors in the co-op uh so maze you're contracting with us uh you know we we have you come along and sit in with our marketing meetings and we sort of collaborate together there but we're not going to bring you along to like our own internal co-op meetings and be like right yeah. maze can you can you make a decision on whether we should uh you know open up a, a bank account with this particular bank it's just like <laughs> i mean maze... i have an opinion um oh yeah know, if you want to talk about banks i have opinions but um, everyone has you, opinions about banks you have not invited those opinions that's totally fine yeah, yeah. But it's also just like, uh, I mean, well, okay. Maybe that wasn't the best specific example, but like, if it's like, <laughs> all right, here's, we want your opinion on a project that you're not working on or, or something else that's like entirely different and, and not at all within your wheelhouse. Yeah, as you described, most people would be like, I don't know. Uh, I don't uh, have an opinion, you know. I have, yeah. I have no strong feelings either way. I have no investment um, in that. But if you ask exactly. me about, you know, UFO tofu and you were like, yeah. you know, this is how it's going to be portrayed mm. or something, then I, yeah. and if I did have like some objection to it, you yeah, know, yeah. Um, I mean, I oh. would, I would feel comfortable, but yeah, how would you, how would you deal with that? Um, so for us, uh, okay. So when it comes to like uh, formal voting power, um, mm -hmm. as in who in the cooperative can make a decision on this. Mm -hmm. um, so it's more like the the one that I was describing before about like, which bank shall we go with? So let's say we did invite you along to a meeting and you you argued passionately for uh, awesome, awesome cooperative bank, insert name here. Uh, you know, we would take that under advisement. Um, and, you know, I, I'm a big believer in sort of, you know, being able to sort of collaborate and, and speak to people openly in these regards and, and being able to sort of make a decision with that sort of information. But like due to the rules of our cop, we, we, you know, you're, you're not the one who's putting in their, um, their money for this. Uh, you're not, uh, a member in that, like, you're not. You don't have the sort of same investment that we do about how to how mm. this co-op runs. So but there is a little bit of investment in that. Um, you know, currently my contract does have a bit of profit share. Um, yeah, yeah. For UFO tofu, not for the whole. Yeah, yeah, not the whole co-op. Yeah. But if you want to invest in the whole co-op. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, so. Um, um, but I think jokes that is... that's that's a cool way to be like you know we do value you beyond um yeah this product also i mean you know the contractors work contributed to the profit and they should get that exactly. profit back um mm. but i think that that is also kind of a cool ongoing relationship in that like you know um those little pieces of income or something keeps that relationship going of like, yeah, we value, we still value your opinion and we still value yeah. you as part of um, our little village community yeah. ecosystem. Um, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And that's fundamentally a thing of like, you know, we're, we're all creatives taking a risk in this industry, right? Like, will, will it boom? Will it bust? Who knows? <laughs> um, and I think that profit share when it comes to that uncertainty, like, um, you know, helps to sort of even that out a little bit. So, you know, I it would be really good if we could just pay you a million dollars and it's like, right, you know, we, we you don't have to worry about like, you know, profit share and stuff going forward because we've we've taken on, we've let you get, yeah. we've given you all of this money so that there is pretty much, you know, no need for you to take any risk with us. If we've, it was a million dollars, I'd probably um, give up profit share. But yeah, there's still that part of like, um, mm you know i the workers have made something that is generating mm. profit you know yeah who gets that yeah. profit the people yeah. who are generating it you know mm. Mm. um yeah so i think that the yeah the risk is one one side but then there's mm. also just the like no i am entitled to that you know what i mean yeah yeah um yeah but if it was a million bucks thanks Bye. Yeah, look. <laughs> well, no, that, that's what I mean, right? Yeah, like, if yeah. if you are <laughs> if you are paid enough money that it's just like, look, you know, you don't need to sort of like, 
I, I guess I, I frame it in terms of risk because mm. like it always gets framed in terms of like, oh, you know, bosses deserve the money that they get because they're all like risking all that money. And I'm like, so are the workers. They're putting in like hours of their life. <laughs> they yeah. should be yeah. they should be like paid for it. Um and that for us, you know, includes like profit share. Mm. Uh but you know, if if we're Look, if we're if we're being very very sort of uh, generous and like just giving out a million dollars and being like, look, you know, it may not even make the return, then like, yeah, it's sure. Like, <laughs> I think a contractor should be happy with that, and I'd be happy. With that. <laughs> but like, yeah, I agree yeah. with you uh, absolutely in terms of that yeah. principle, in terms of like that profit should be sort of shared. Mm. But um, I guess the the difference between like how we can sort of conceptualize like you know that ongoing relationship is like uh, okay uh i'm not sure that like in terms of like a cooperative like a contractor like yourself who is very busy and, and very sort of successful or let's say established if if we're if we're if that's a bit too far um yeah is you know you have your own priorities and concerns and i i'm not even sure that you'd want to like come along to every sort of co-op meeting and things like that Absolutely. so our relationship oh sorry <laughs> exactly <laughs> so our relationship is you know we limit it down we put the scope and we say like yeah. look you know this is this is where like our contract begins and ends and and this is what the ongoing relationship will be after the project is shipped so you know all the mm. not all the profits but like the percentage of the profits that we agreed on uh you know this is how much mm. you'll be getting mm. um and we've put in sort of like you know a minimum that you're going to be paid and you know this is the stuff that'll be going forward i believe we also tried to negotiate like if the game makes this amount then you'll get paid this much and if not you'll get paid this much so yeah like you yeah, can get really finicky yeah um that's quite I mean, we can talk about revenue share models for so long. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's quite common is if, uh, you know, people don't want to do like the monthly paperwork, they could just do paperwork for, okay, like the first hundred grand has come in, then the next yeah. 500 grand or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one thing I wanted to talk about with, um, you know, uh, consensus and consensual organizing, um, mm. I mean, consensual is a little bit different. When people could just be like, "Yeah, um, I yeah. consent to this happening. I don't yeah. like mm. uh, necessarily agree with like that." Yeah. Can get a little bit political, I think, where yeah, people yeah. can, you know, almost mm. use a consenting vote as a yeah. like ch almost choosing not to vote in a way. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's sort of beside the point. Um, one mm. of the other principles of co-ops is that, like, um, it, it informed democracy, you know, yep. that um, people should have that information and be empowered by information mm. and knowledge. Um, you know, one of the processes around that for us um, is, is very much around financials. Mm. Um, so, you know, not everyone is super great at reading a spreadsheet. As mm. many pie charts as Jason puts in, which we love. We, we love reading pie charts. Um, oh, that's our, wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our, our budget um, spreadsheets, you know, uh, actually Jason and Russ are just um, wizards at, at these. You know, they, they have multiple sheets all in the same document they all link together and they all blah, 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 blah. um you know they're not always the easiest to read so uh, or you know um some people definitely will look at a spreadsheet and their eyes will glaze over and they will just yeah. um you know someone like that uh has other skills in the co-op, you know, they don't yeah, have to yeah. be like a financial whiz um, mm. to still have opinions. So, you know, we do make quite sure that everyone actually understands. And that means that it's usually Jason will sit us down mm. um, and whether it's in person or lately online, we'll start going through like these are the bits that you know are important and this is what we need to um basically decide you know we're yeah. moving budget from here to there um 
you know, uh, here are the large costs. Like when you see that in a, in a pie chart, like how do you feel about that? Is that okay that that amount of money is going over there? Um, and, and all of these kinds of things. So that's really important um, in order for us to have very informed decisions, basically. Um, and I think that that's, you know, a process that started quite um, organically, but now is kind of like, no, this is how we do things. This is, this is how we do budgets <laughs> um, yeah. and, and decide how to move around money. Um, yeah. 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 I mean, like, yeah. Ooh. so we, we have a similar thing with regards to financials in that uh so i'm in i'm in charge of it but i have yet to learn the secrets of pie charts but this excites me yeah, um, well i'm sure um jace would love to give you a workshop on pie charts please uh out of the spirit of solidarity between cooperatives yeah. i would love that yeah. um but um I'm yeah, so... offering his time <laughs> <laughs> i i love volunteering my own cooperators um <laughs> uh, so uh yeah like Discussing money and things like that and making informed decisions about money is, is mm. obviously extremely important, right? Mm. And the, the question that, like, you, the way that, you know, you seem to approach it is that you have a, a couple of cooperators who are fairly sort of skilled at sort of breaking it down and really getting technical. I, yeah, so, like, you know, we have our budgets, but we don't, like... I, I guess I, I simplify it in a way. Like I, I don't mm. do sort of like those proper reports quite yet, but I, I look forward to submitting them to fair trading uh, soon. Um, but yeah, like I, I essentially, we use a shorthand in terms of like, how many weeks wages is this gonna be? Um, yeah, and nice. so we then talked about like, you know, like the decision and like, all right, so, you know, we're talking about going to PAX this year. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna get a booth uh, and this is how many weeks it's gonna cost. And these are the, the strategies and, and the, the goals that we have there. And this is, you know, how many, let's say, you know, we, we need to sell X amount of copies of uh, UFO tofu um, to, to start making this sort of break even. Mm. So let's, let's go through the sort of marketing principle. We need to, let's say that for every, you know, uh, 100, uh, you know, business cards we hand out or 100 little pamphlets we hand out, like 10 people will buy a copy of the game. So, okay, we have a target of how many we need to sell in order to, to make this financially viable. Yeah. So then we, we extrapolate that out and we're like, okay, so these are all the investments and this is what we're aiming for. Like, do we think that this is viable? Like, how are we going to approach this? Do we have the time and the effort to sort of dedicate to this? Uh, so we get all those ducks in a row and then if it all works out then yeah but that's a fairly big undertaking going to like a, a, a convention yeah. right yeah. when it comes to smaller things like you know what uh project are we going to go with um well, then, that's, yeah 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 that's that's something that's a a little bit you know a little bit different also uh pause the recording for just a second uh okay sorry i all right so uh as i was sort of saying just before we had to pause um yeah making uh decisions about like what projects to go right mm. uh, or what what to uh you know uh what internet uh, not internet provider domain name provider yeah. or to, to go with for a website like yeah. essentially you know you you have an informed decision about like or you try and give an informed decision about like here's what we think is good about this particular approach or this particular decision mm. here's what we think is good about this particular decision mm. and you generally try and make it into something that's a little bit more um accessible right so mm. as a as a person who's not technical in terms of like programming and I, I'm not sure what your programming background is either, uh, but like, yeah, like if if someone's talking to me about like what programming language we should use for like a project, I'll be like, I don't know, man. Like you, you tell me. It's all Greek to me. Uh, but yeah, That's like actually, that actually touches on a cool thing. Um, mm -hmm. So for us, another way we've um, figured out kind of like you know how to make decisions is we have listed our values and ranked them um, oh. yeah so <laughs> that that um it's some, something that i learned to do in a um, grad certificate in 
community arts engagement that I did. Ah. Um, and then Georgia um, is also used to these mm. kinds of conversations. So it's mostly facilitated um, mm. by her and a bit by me also. Mm. Um, so the first time we did this, um, and the first time that I, actually the first time I did this during this class mm. um, was we all, there was like eight of us or something in the class, we all stood in front of a whiteboard and we wrote all kinds of values, you know, just to like get across what values were. So it was like, um, I value um, like sexual liberties and I value um, capitalism and stability, mm. flexibility, mm. I value yeah, yeah. Um, social justice, you know, all of, yeah. all of these kinds of things, you know, I value mm. flexible work hours, <laughs> you know, you can like yeah, yeah. kind of get things, you know, mm. um, and then you start to like, all right, uh, I want to choose seven values that I actually value, you know, and they might be like creativity, being a role model, um, sharing knowledge, um, love, um, you know, whatever. And then um, in that class, it was like rank those, <laughs> which is like terrifying. Um, yep. But also I'm starting to really, really, really enjoy that process. Mm. Um, and then in that class, it was boil it down to three, like because yeah, it was on yeah. an individual level. Mm. Um, on Wayward, we uh, we figured out the values that were in the game um, and mm. why they were there and in the business and our relationships and things. Um, boiled them down to, I think we're probably around like eight or something like that, and then mm. ranked those. Yeah, um, yeah. We, you know, we're not really into like arbitrary rules. So, so <laughs> some of the um, values are like side by side, you know. So, mm -hmm. um, and and then we've reassessed them. So, um, you know, during the process of this, um, people have had babies, people have bought houses, um, mm -hmm. you know. So those kinds of things have gone up the ranks a little bit. Um, yeah. you know, people start wanting to have babies or buy houses. Um, you know, our, uh, our, you know, wanting to be a role model is quite high up there, um, mm -hmm. because of where well, most of us have been in games for 10 years, around 10 years, or, you mm -hmm. know, almost 20 years now in, in some of our cases. Mm -hmm. Um, that's something that has come naturally to us before Wayward and then now, um, you know, something that we wanted to maintain. And then there's things like artistic integrity. Um, and then there's things like innovation, um, excitement, uh, stability, access, financial accessibility is an interesting one. That was one mm. of the ones that some people had and some people didn't. Because okay. that really um, affects like the price of the game. Is what yeah, I, yeah. Is, you know? Okay. Yeah. yeah, it was. Um, so, yeah, that's one of uh, our ways of making a decision is to kind of look at these values. Um, so, if we were to decide on a programming language, which recently, you know, looking at our next project, we were like, what engine should we do this in? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, I've been. Uh, last year I worked in, in Unreal um, when I was working on Godfall and I loved the audio stuff in Unreal um, and I was like, hmm, I want to work in Unreal. <laughs> I'm okay. excited about that. Um, and then, you know, other people were like, I'm not excited about working in Unreal. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, no. Yeah, and I was like, fine. Okay, but what I'm excited about is like the sound cues and you know now it's more mm. the sounds um, and blueprints and stuff. So what if mm. we try Bolt in Unity? Um, Bolt is not the same. It's awful. Um, oh but, no. <laughs> um, oh. You know, but that you know that's kind of how we make decisions. Mm. Also, is like, okay, this we have a lot of tech invested in uh, the Unity ecosystem. A lot of existing yep. tech that we've made. Um, mm. Let's balance that up against what we're excited about. Um, Maze is the only one who wants to switch engine. Um, <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, um, and yeah. but like, yeah, you had that. You had that discussion where you explained like, okay, 
let's hit, okay, peeps, hear me out. Unreal, yay or nay? And you explained like, oh, this is why I think Unreal is great, or at least this is the great experiences that yeah. I had, right? Yeah, yeah. And then as a cooperative, like, you know, if I would approach that in terms of like, okay, well, you know, programmers or, or the audience, uh, so the designers or whatever say that there are these limitations there, but yeah. you want these sort of advantages. So what can we do to try and like yeah. basically get those advantages in, Which is in a, a different great role as a producer, right? Is to mm. have all of those different people on the team and, and mm. be like, okay, well, maybe yeah. the decision's going to come to me. And um, mm. and we all respect the, the producer for their expertise and their, their way of um, dealing with all of our different uh, agendas. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I like that my uh, my producer instinct is just like, what is the cheapest and most practical option? Um, but yeah, yeah. No. for us, it's often um, you know we're we sunk so much money. Um, yeah, so often it's uh, where we have not done things the cheapest way. Um, nope. Fair enough. Well, I mean, <laughs> I I have my uh, my particular Gordian not being cut by my uh, my shoestring budget. So yeah, that's yeah. just like, nope. We gotta we gotta see what we can do with what we got, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that. Mm. Anyway. It look we we work with what we have and absolutely yeah. you make you make the best that uh, what you do have and so yeah same way that you are now working with Unity Bolt and trying to make that work no I'm and I can not. see <laughs> I'm not <laughs> <All> using <right>. Bolt <laughs> all right oh <laughs> uh, well I I can see the thousand yard stare in your eyes um, <laughs> uh, but yeah so it's it's yeah essentially like. I guess that that's a part of like consensus decision making, right? Mm, you are mm, you are mm. trying to find what is what is most practical. And if someone, so let's say like you and I are in a discussion, and mm. I am just refusing to come along um, on on a particular decision, like the way that you know you would approach that, and the cooperative would approach that, would be like, okay, why do you feel so strongly about this? Yes, exactly. Um, and it's like, okay, so let's let's address these concerns, right? Mm. And and try and and see what's sort of going on there. Mm. Uh, so one thing I do want to want to shout out about is that uh, so on our team we have uh, Jay who has uh, a very sort of uh, cautious approach to things and and is very good at like basically playing the devil's advocate in terms of like what if things don't work out exactly that we want or like what are the things that can sort of go wrong? Mm. Um, and that's extremely useful because otherwise it's just like a room of a very excitable people being like let's do this and it's like no you need someone who is going to basically say like okay here are the concerns that we should look at and yeah that's that i guess is like something that a cooperative doesn't just like accommodate for it's something that can it can only work if it has people who are attempting to engage and get everyone um to understand the the very real uh, possible consequences of their decisions um, as opposed to like a company where it's like all right if anyone has any feedback speak up uh, you have spoken up you're fired um, <laughs> so yeah, like yeah it's these uh, constant like um, ladders you know because mm -hmm. like people want their idea approved so that they can go up the ladder of authority or whatever yeah you know? yeah and if someone below you is giving you like you know your comeuppance and is saying that your your decision is not the best then yeah it's just like you don't really have as much of a voice as you would in a cooperative where you are in fact like you know um at, you know when it comes to decision uh, consensus decision making it's about it's not just about um getting on the same page to to consent as you mentioned before it's like how do we address your concerns and turn you from a no to a yes? Ah, anyway, I got passionate about that. So yeah, thank you. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that um, you know, Goldie and I are very loud voices within our co-op, and um, often uh, other people tend to be the the ones that. Um, I don't know, things have things have changed, you know, because we've been working together for so long. Um, mm -hmm. But it it used to be that um, other people would need to kind of step in and help us like engage properly um, and you know that was really what? cool because it means that you know we we figure out 
compromise, but in a good way. You know, I think a lot mm. of people see compromise as like a, um, a not nice word where you're giving up something. But really, no. it's it's finding it's finding the outcome that actually aligns with both of those people's values. You know, where yeah. where it's that kind of good faith that like mm. we do actually both want the best thing for the game. We are both mm. brilliant, successful mm. artists. Um, mm and activists and well-rounded humans who have professional yeah. opinions or whatever. Um, so we are aligned, you know? Um, mm. So let's figure out what, where that alignment is um, mm. amongst all of the things that we disagree about, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I'd be, I'd be, uh, so like, yeah, uh, just to reaffirm what you said, like compromise, like it's not about, uh, we'll go halfway between our two points. No. no, it's about like, I have particular concerns. You have particular concerns. You have very strong opinions on Unreal. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, how do we how do we address those? How do we address not just like the point that you're making, but the the sort of underlying needs and, and concerns that you have? And so that's that's a proper compromise. That's where that's it's it, like the underlying concerns, and it's almost like you know trying to come up with a design solution. You know. Mm. Um, mm. And that kind of lateral thinking. Yeah. yeah. And I just want to clarify, I am not in love with Unreal. And in fact, oh. I always bring up the most cons about Unreal. You know, <laughs> where they get their money from, for example. Um, ah, yes, who yes. owns Epic and portions of Epic. And then, you know, all of the things about Fortnite and ah, yes, kids yes. Um, and all of those sorts of things. So, mm. you know, I... <laughs> Sorry, really I'm sorry like for the engine, and I don't really like Epic or any yep. large corporation. So, yeah, fair enough. I'm definitely not a loyalist to any product or company. Mm. I, I don't think anyone really should be, but no. I apologize for besmirching your good uh, activist <laughs> friend. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess like one thing I wanted to ask you was mm -hmm. like what. So you mentioned before that you and and Goldie, I believe, had yep. sort of trouble sort of engaging. Um, in the sort of uh, organization before, like what facilitated like going from that disengagement into engagement? I think, you know, growing up, um, and I think that, you know, you can look at co-ops around the world um, and, and, you know, and companies and be like, well, those people were really young when they started. Um, uh, and that's why it failed, not because of, um, you know, uh, the structure of a company or the structure of a co-op or whatever. Um, and, you know, part of, <laughs> I don't think Russ and Jace would mind me saying this, but they are a bit older than Goldie and I, um, and, uh, having that age diversity within the co-op, um, you know, as as we all get older, that gap feels much, much less. Um, and experience diversity meant that um, people like them could kind of look at Goldie and I and be like, I see what's happening, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, uh, and, you know, I think it was also just Goldie and I seeing in ourselves, this is funny to say publicly, but um, that, you know, we are both big passionate personalities and we both love that about each other a lot um and and that we are aligned you know um yeah. so i think that there's a lot of trust and love um in in our relationship um and you know knowledge that we're both like <laughs> yeah very very passionate um mm. yeah and you know that's that's something that you have to deal with and embrace, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, I think that it's quite, it's, it's easy in some workplaces to feel like, you know, oh, I'm constantly having arguments or something and we're, we're yeah. not, we're not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hmm. But, um, you know, to feel like you're not listened to and that yeah. people aren't paying attention and they're eventually, hmm you just stop disengage yeah. yeah um and we don't have that at ghost pattern um you know people are listened to and i think that that's really cool and you know part of also the history of us is that we can 
know each other's personalities also and kind of read between the lines a little bit um but yeah I guess it, that's part of just dealing with relationships is that um and you know maybe in a co-op also you that like dealing with a relationship a person rather than mm. like just a, a boss an asset yeah yeah <laughs> um you know like uh that is really up front and center you know like i'm not just the audio that i output i'm a whole person um yeah and and everyone else and i think that being really important um yeah yeah, I don't know. Was that your question? Yeah. No, I, I think it was, like, I think you answered it and then some. And I, I really appreciate that. And, you know, this is something that, like, something that I've found um, from, reported from my cooperators and uh, from other peeps that have helped to sort of uh, form cooperatives of various sorts. Mm. Um, it's a very different feeling, sort of, working in a, in a cooperative as a mm as opposed to a business mm. um it's a, it's a very much yeah yeah oh yes yes as opposed to a company yes yeah. um or at least one which has a more hierarchical sort of structure right yeah it, it's more about like you end up feeling like this is you know your collaborative sort of action you're you're all working together and in, in sort of you know aimed towards one goal that you've all discussed mm. and agreed on mm. and you're you know, bringing your whole self exactly you know? which is so rare in mm -hmm. in a lot of companies right where it's like yeah. i'm not bringing my whole self i'm bringing a hundred audio assets a day you know yeah exactly um, and they don't give a shit about anything else um yeah it's all about them kpis yeah uh, yeah uh but yeah like it's uh no it is something that like it makes you more holistic it makes you more on the ball i feel like you're you're not just like I've got my patch and that's all I worry about. You can be like that, but like you also you know care about like what other people are doing and you know you want to sort of help them out and it's quite lovely when like you know my cooperators organize their own sort of um, you know meetings for for like oh we we got to do some design work this weekend like who's who's up and about and I'm like oh, I can't make it but. The other designers can and then they go and have a grand old time and i see the notes afterwards and it's like oh you did this yourselves i'm so proud of you <laughs> uh, <laughs> um and yeah so it's like yeah it's it's wonderful to sort of see that like first of all people feel comfortable like not just like you know we have our set work times and, and you can come along to that it's like mm -hmm um you know i can't make these times but like let's try and organize a different time or like there's an extra meeting that i would like to organize myself and it's like cool um obviously it's all done within the hours that they're able uh, or that they are uh contracted to do there is a maximum uh but yeah like it's That's cool so you've set like a maximum amount of hours um is that for, like for financial reason or profit share reason that kind of deal it's more like just in terms of of fairness right like uh if someone's just consistently so the way that we've got it is that uh you know we're all working part-time one day a week um mm. so eight hours but you can go up to let's say 16 so two days a week uh if you want to do more it better not be consistent um in that like look if you yeah. if you want to put in some extra time cool but if you are consistently putting in like 40 hours a week uh, while other people are putting in like eight or 16, you are you are like, if you can do that, like great, but also like, are you gonna feel upset or something? If, if like, you know, you, you can't, uh, if, if like the rest of the co-op isn't following along and we don't wanna lead to that arms race of like, well, I work 60 hours a week, I should get more. Yeah, or, or like I'm- Creating those power structures. So you've mm. put in a process that tries to mitigate people creating power structures. Yeah, and mm. more so just to manage expectations, right? Mm. So we all were just like, look, you know, some people will have more capacity than others. Like I, especially at the start, um, and especially during the administrative process, like I'm putting in way more hours than other people. But, you know, um, that 
like that was with the understanding that like I'm also looking for new work so I recently started a new job and I wasn't able to put in as much time into the co-op as I could uh, because yeah I had to just dedicate it at the new job um, and that was all understood that's all okay because I built up that trust and that goodwill and and you know the the hours that I put in before are, are now paying off because we are close to finally having a, a co-op formed so you know it's just like you know it's an understanding of like for me, I, I put in those extra hours because I was like, I want to get this thing off the ground and it's going to put in some extra like elbow grease and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and the understanding is that like at some point, like, you know, those hours are going to drop. Don't expect that I'll be doing this forever. I'm not going to expect if someone's if one of my programmers just like goes on a on a three day bender of like unbelievably great like work like that's that's just how they work. Yeah. They're, they're happy doing that. And I'm like, OK. As long as it doesn't like adversely impact you, sure. But also, I don't expect you to do this all the time. Sometimes yeah. inspiration just strikes, and that's you just end up getting like those extra hours in. Um, and yeah, if if we need to, if someone is putting in just way too much work and they're just like, you know, just not being reasonable about it, then we're like, look, maximum sixteen. You go do something else. Um, or, or yeah, basically. But yeah, so we enforce that very sort of informally, but we do have that sort of like process there. Um, cool. At some point when we get, you know, uh, you know, proper funding and things like that, and we can all work full time at the dream, um, then yeah, like, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have that process there of like, look, you know, you got your 40 hours a week. If you can't get the work done in that, then the producer is just going to extend deadlines. You are, you are not allowed to like, you know, take this home. You're not allowed to, to like, mortgage your own personal life uh for this project mm. um and yeah that's that's essentially how we're approaching it right mm. uh but since we got that sort of part-time approach now we're just like yeah uh we it all will sort of even out um is is how we currently see it um and we understand that like you know if you're putting in like way too much hours like we will either ask you to stop or yeah just make sure that you're not getting burnt out or feel upset when like yeah you don't feel like you're you're carrying too much of the butt but yeah how does uh how does ghost pattern approach this yeah you know I'm, like it's curious i'm i'm curious um because yeah that starting out everyone working minimal hours is really different to how we started um where jason for us um you know kind of quit their full-time jobs to make their dream game um, uh, and invested a lot of time and money. Um, and I guess the other thing for us is that, um, you know, there is undoubtedly more programming hours that go into this game than um, any other hours, you know? Mm -hmm. um, uh, on top of that, uh, it's a huge privilege to be a programmer in games, you know, there's a lot more jobs, um, mm. a lot more opportunity for, for money. So that's kind of where we're coming at it is like, okay, these two programmers um, have, you know, the more money, more work that's needed to be done also. Um, uh, how how do we mitigate, yeah, their power in a way, um, while acknowledging that, you know, uh, for Goldie and I, um, and Georgia, you know, in a way, um, there's a lot less opportunity, um, uh, and, you know, there's, there's less audio jobs, there's less art jobs, um, but, also, yeah, okay. at the same time, like, Goldie and I love to work on a lot of these different projects and stuff, like, um, she's illustrated a, you know, book recently, and she got to work on the amazing um, Goose Game map, you know, that, oh. um, yeah, that, that beautiful big mm -hmm. poster illustration, um, and, and other illustrations, you know, mm -hmm. with free play as well. Um, nice, nice. Yeah, and, you know, I get to work with your team and I get to work mm -hmm. with Wolfire, the other large studio, and I get to work on, on you know, Friends animations and, and mm -hmm. things like that. And I love, love, love that. But anyway, you know, so it's quite different where we have these two ideally full-time programmers um, and Jason also does a lot of, like, production work. 
Um, and then other people who are like, you know, the work is part time, <laughs> you know, um, or, you know, uh, can be more if we do things outside of those roles. Um, so part of that is that um, investment of any kind, so whether it's hours or money, um, will be, it's not an investment, it's a loan. So an investment basically implies that um, you'll be getting a return, you know, um, some kind of interest or some kind of profit, right? Um, but no, we're just, we're just gonna pay it back, you know? And mm. that's kind of how we're doing it, is that you don't really get a, um, a monetary benefit um, <laughs> for your investment other than other than like the game probably doing better um, because it's a better game oh, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah so that's how we're dealing with that um, as far as like the informal power structures that's one of the reasons why we be why we um, wanted to become a co-op right is because the informal power structure was actually formal it was yeah. that <laughs> you know mm. um mm. people own the company and um, yeah 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 um yeah the sorts of decisions was you know of like where should we spend this money i was like it's not my money <laughs> 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 um yeah uh so yeah and i guess like <laughs> again through our history we've been able to work through that and that's really um a huge boon for us but if yeah if the culture changes and in informal power structures um come up a lot more uh and start to cause tension then we would we'd have to address that and make yeah. some more formal process but at the moment um we definitely use that financial structure as the like is emotionally where we should try to be at also you know yeah yeah um yeah which is a big mm. thing right you know yeah, yeah. like it's like when you um pay to go to an event instead of the event being free like you're more mm. likely to turn up you know yeah yeah exactly <laughs> um you know like that yeah it sucks that it's money um but it's a very easily be easily countable value you know it yeah, has a number, yeah. Um, yeah yeah this much investment and it's you know, not too hard to emotionally get behind that too. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, so this is, this is something that I, this might be a prickly question. Like, mm. okay. Do all of your people get paid the same at the car or do they have the same rate or do you have different rates? Um, everyone who is the core team, we all get paid the same. Okay. So we do um, as well. Other but, than uh, the free hours. So yep. if it's free, then it's then you're not getting paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fair enough. I so we've got uh, for us leveling out the sort of like because I think there is a, an element of sort of um, yeah uh, undervaluing of sort of non-programmer um, work within within game dev, uh, and I think that's something we touched upon as well. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, yeah, for us, one of the issues did come up around juniors, you know, which, like, for me is, uh, you know, there's one person audio team, um, but the art team expands quite um, a lot, you know. In yeah, there. yeah. Um, when people are contractors, you know, they aren't in what we habitually call the core team. So, you know, mm -hmm. they um, can get paid more, you know, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and... And that's fundamentally like, to like yeah that's fundamental to contractors yeah um, it has been interesting in a way of like kind of self-worth you know when mm. when you know someone is a little bit less of a contractor still technically a contractor mm. um but they have a much more long-term contract mm. it has been kind of a bit um on a per basis thing so mm. yeah everyone in the core team mm. but when it comes to the contractors they are they uh what is it negotiate different things yeah 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 um so for us yeah. uh we've got our 
So everyone gets paid the same. Everyone gets paid the minimum for uh, the professionals award, which is what a programmer like. That's the award that covers programmers in in IT and software. Um, and that's the so we're both organizers for Game Workers Unite Australia. Surprise. Um, and yeah. yeah, everyone who professionals that professional award is everyone who contributes to the development of software. So it's not. Yep. It's not, yeah. it's not just programmers. It's everyone no. who contributes to the development of software. Exactly, uh, uh, and that's <laughs> what we're what we're living by, right? In our in our co-op. Um, so we basically said, like, yep, uh, this is the this is the award that was previously just being used to cover programmers. We're going to say that it covers everyone because quite clearly everyone's participating in the construction of software. Yeah. Um, which is why for, all games workers are eligible under this also. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, with us, uh, the actual paying out wages, right? Mm -hmm. So we have members in the co-op, like myself, who have a full-time job that pays pretty well. Um, uh, and so I am, in fact, foregoing a wage in order to maintain our funds for as long as possible for the members of the co-op. Yeah, who... which is the, similar to Jason Russ. Like, um, mm -hmm. the rest of the team have also, the rest of the core team have also put in unpaid hours um, mm -hmm. at different times. But it's um, yeah. No so you are doing more. yeah. Yeah, you are doing. I think something similar to us in that you are mm. keeping a track of the hours that are worked mm. and sort of like it's you. You you say that you treat it as a loan. We say we treat it as an investment because like, look, you know the the what will hopefully pay out is like the profit share at the end, right? Mm. Um, where like the way that we sort of determine it um, after, you know. Uh, the gross is sort of like pays off the tax and the contractors and stuff that we need, that profit um, gets divvied up um, six ways. Uh, if it's a the group project, if it's an individual project, it's a little bit different. Uh, but yeah, uh, it'll be divvied up six ways, five of the co-op members and then the co-op itself. With the yeah, co-op right. itself, those funds are then sort of like determined collectively, like what do we do with like the next project? Or, or are we just like, we've made, you know, a million dollars uh let's let's just like retire uh mm. make our own silly games mm. for a little bit or, or do whatever right um and that touches so, on so like how have you dealt with that as far as lawyers and accountants go oh so <laughs> we uh live, yeah so but my answer is very simple i think yours is a little bit more complex because you're handling a little bit more money um so we are working with the cult federation they have been incredibly helpful with like here's how to sort of navigate these things um and so yeah we've got that very basic thing otherwise i've just been like looking at um new south wales like small business sort of like uh fair trading sites and things like that so we haven't engaged uh an accountant or a lawyer yet that's all been handled by co-op federation um, and that's because we've got fairly simple sort of um sums and things that need to be handled there um but yeah so Maze, tell us about your experience with <laughs> lawyers and accountants um yeah so you know the whole co-op thing wasn't on our radar for a long time um uh, and but you know profit share and all of those kinds of things was you know um, Jason being from uh, League of Geeks you know who we we know um, have interesting have had interesting profit share arrangements um, and then you know myself having small profit share arrangements with a variety of different studios that kind of thing has always been really important um, so. On the lawyer side, um, you know, Jason anecdotally, you know, has well, Jason has said to the team um, that he and Russ have felt like they've almost had to write the contract themselves and the lawyer signs it off. That's been um, really annoying, you know, yeah, and it's kind yeah. of disappointing that more lawyers aren't um, across, you know, these sorts of what I think is just ethical business, you know, yeah. like, um, and then, you know, you and I have seen a whole heap of contracts now through Game Workers Unite and mm. the template contracts are just so screwed up, you know, that yeah. lawyers give people and, yeah. and, um, you know, people who run game studios don't realize or, 
you know, that's that's part of um, why financial literacy is such a huge part of Game Workers Unite, um, is because people who are founding studios have no idea what to expect in a contract, no idea yeah. if they're screwing their friends over, you know, because yeah. this is an industry made of a lot of friends, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Um, and, you know, because it's such a small industry. So, yeah, we haven't had an awesome time with lawyers. Um, mm. And I think we've gone through two or three now. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, that has been not great, but we're looking forward to being more part of the co-op ecosystem and, and um, yeah. having more um, fun <laughs> with those yeah, kinds yeah. of people, you know, and we've, I've met mm. um, more lawyers through the earth workers um, and mm. also accountants. Accountants wise, um, we've been super lucky that Jace's dad is actually an accountant, um, you know, and yeah, it's been a learning process for him as well, but he understands and has the patience um, to, uh, to understand all of our stuff, you know. Cool. Um, but then, you know, there are some cool game specific or, you know, cool accountants who have much more experience with games. Um, mm -hmm. So dealing with, you know, when you get a publishing deal or a grant or, a, um, mm -hmm. you know, non recoupable funds from a platform or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, and dealing with the tax side of that, you know, when you get like yeah, a whole yeah. heap of money um mm -hmm. and then you gotta spend it before july like <laughs> um oh, oh no hilarious um <laughs> and then all right everybody gets a wii u <laughs> what <laughs> what oh sorry I, for <laughs> I, for I, I forgot i forgot that it's meant to be a switch i'm sorry <laughs> switch Pro. i'm not a console i'm not a i'm not a console gamer man Maybe i'm not switch i'm just Pro. like oh no ps5 give me a ps5 um <laughs> all right ps5 like let's let's get through this grant money come on let's go maze uh, <laughs> um and then you know when the when a games studio releases a game and gets like mm. a huge, huge spike of money, like how do you deal with that? Um, yeah, yeah. And you know those sorts of game specific, oh, those accountants who are used to dealing with um, projects like that are really valuable. And yeah, we've we've been lucky on that side. But again, you know, being part of the co-op ecosystem, mm. these um, co-ops know accountants and lawyers around and things like that so mm. yeah that's been yeah but <laughs> yeah, yeah. before no, that... before the co-op um thing it was interesting dealing with lawyers who are very uh pro boss and exploitation <laughs> yeah no they're they're very much about um at least from a lot of them they don't oh. get what you're trying to do ah. <laughs> no they're just like wait so you're not trying to like you know Pull, pull like every bit of profit from like the the work that someone else has done for you well, yeah. but but why but what's yeah. the point why are yeah. you doing this? um and yeah. it's yeah no so it's very different and and i appreciate when i when when i encounter lawyers who do understand that like oh so this isn't like you know i think maybe like having a talk with more lawyers that are used to like working for not-for-profits might be might be something that might be more beneficial because uh, when it comes to that, they'd probably know a bit more about like, oh, so this isn't just like a purely evil capitalist enterprise trying to like screw over as many people as possible. Cause, yeah, well, so charities and not-for-profits have a whole other kind of deal going on, you know, mm. Mm. where their money, it's, it's not that their money is going into the workers, mm. it's just not staying in the company. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I guess it's just like, yeah, look, we need to grow the eco, the co-op ecosystem more, so that we can get more co-op lawyers. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and you know there there are like a, a fair few around, you know, mm. Um, mm. and we're slowly getting them more familiar with games. Which yeah, is cool. yeah, Excellent. and you know, so many um, co-ops are like artist co-ops, right? And that's not too dissimilar. Mm. Um, and you know, you and I we mentioned bands earlier, also like. And I mentioned as soon as you get a lead singer or a lead guitarist, <laughs> then, it, then it's probably a company. No, <laughs> um, but you know these kinds of things are, are not that dissimilar. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, uh, I guess. All right. So 
with regards to money, yeah, like you, how much has uh, support has Ghost Pattern gotten from your state? Because I can tell you <laughs> in one word how much support we've gotten from our state, and it is nothing, nada, zip. We've gotten a fair amount, you know, it's a pretty easy, um, well, okay, so one thing is interesting, um, we didn't have a vertical slice or anything when we first got funded, um, and uh, we were told from Film Vic that it was a bit of an experiment to see if they could fund a game from a proposal rather than... Ah. Um, even the game a vertical slice, stuff. yeah. Yeah, so our first piece of funding was for a vertical slice. Mm. Um, you know, I, I think it it is an easy game to fund from a state cultural point of view. You know, mm. it's based in Australia, it's based based in Victoria in 1978. You know, it's very specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then when we were first funded, the team behind it, you know, a few of us were um, not super experienced, but then we had Jason and Russell who were, you know, yeah, quite yeah. experienced already. Um, but our team was made up of really interesting people, you know, like at that point, Georgia and I had worked in theatre together. Um, and I think Goldie was involved in free play already by that point. So, you know, it was and she was doing a lot of comics then. Um, so it was a cool team um, and a cool cultural um, game that, you know, uh, is a, yeah, would be a yeah. good proof, you know, to be like, if yeah. we can make this game successful, then, you know, um, we can prove that, that this is valuable and this is a good thing to fund. Um, yeah. So I think we've been successful in three or four funding rounds from mm. Film Victoria. Um, and uh, also successful in um, different other other funds too. Yeah. So yeah, from platforms or other artistic funds or all those kinds of things. So, um, and those things have come easier later in development mm. because, you know, now uh, all of us have very impressive folios. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, and people really back our experienced team really well. Um, and we've gotten better at talking about how amazingly innovative our game is. So, yeah, I guess also the thing about um, Film Vic is that you do have to match the funding that you get. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we've done that in a combination of... Um, for those grants, it's a little bit different now, um, but at the times we've matched it with a combination of unpaid hours and monetary investment. Oh, yeah. I I'm surprised by. Okay, so like. Yeah, so that comes under in kind mm. on a grant application. Yeah. Ah, oh, okay. So like, okay, with regards to, uh, I haven't been able to get any. Uh, well, we have notoriously no support for games in New South Wales yeah. because uh, the state government's like, look, if it's not mined out of the ground, like, why do we even care? And I'm like, all right, you've got your priorities. Um, but the city of Sydney does have some grants that like are there to support like tech startups. So I'm going to be applying for some of them um, mm -hmm. when they open up for their uh, applications later this year. Um, and yeah, so one of the things that is like thrown me for a bit of a curveball is that like you have to like match the grant in, in like with your own sort of mm. I guess funds mm. and it'd be interesting to point to something like well like here we'll we'll like I will forego pay or, or something um and you know we'll we'll match that in the hours that I would have been paid kind of thing yeah and I think that that's a that's a really that's a really good approach. I'm, I'm going to definitely see if I can find any in-kind opportunities like that and personally see if I can help secure some more funding or That's support for my co-op that way. Yeah, it's called in-kind. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know, I've seen it on every single arts grant I've ever seen, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and often uh, on those arts grants, it's like, oh, I'm getting the venue for free, you know, and yeah, yeah. Like this, and, or I'm getting the gear for free, or mm -hmm. my mate's doing it, and they're only um, asking me for a small, to, you know, they give me a discount 
Um, so yeah, those sorts of things. Um, yeah, whereas we've definitely had more of a combination. It's not just unpaid hours, but it is yeah the in kind investment. Um, yeah. But Taya, did you know we've gone for one hour and twenty four minutes? Oh wow! All right. Yeah. Well, so I reckon, yeah. you know, can you tell me a little bit about your photo view? Yes. Uh, so UFO Tofu is a wonderful uh, puzzle game uh, being made by Inflorescent Games Co-op with uh, Maze also providing audio. Uh, one of our cooperators, this is their individual project. Uh, their name is Albi Amakir. Uh, so it's a very chill, very zen with mag magical girl vibes, uh, a sort of puzzle game where you basically make visual palindromes. Um, so similar to like Bejeweled and, and those sorts of uh, puzzle games where you're connecting up the, the various sort of icons. Instead, you're trying to create visual palindromes. It's very chill. And if you think that it is your jam, uh, you might be able to find the original UFO Tofu on your uh, iOS or Android store. Um, otherwise, uh, you can look forward to the game being released later this year if you want to hear updates about it uh feel free to follow us on twitter at inflow games uh, co-op we will soon have a website and a newsletter that you can sign up for uh and yeah learn learn more about the game but uh maze like mm. uh do you want to talk about uh wayward strand and tell us how amazing and wonderful it is that it will be <laughs> when it finally comes out and i'm very excited uh yeah so in Wayward Strand, you play as Casey, who is 14 years old, um, in 1978, um, near Inverloch, <laughs> which is up the Basque Coast um, in Victoria, um, and over a weekend in your summer holidays, um, your mum is head nurse of a flying hospital ship, and she invites you up um, to occupy um, and chat with the oldies on the elderly ward um, while she gets the hospital ready for a, for a big sort of inspection coming up. Um, uh. Yeah, it is uh, a real-time narrative game, so um, everyone in the game is on their own schedules, you know, mm -hmm. and as a 14-year-old you're kind of wandering around this hospital and chatting with people um, over three um, in-game days. Yeah, and everyone's still sort of continuing their lives and that kind awesome. of thing. Yeah, so we're really excited about it. You can look at um, waywardstrand.com. You can look at Wayward Strand on Steam and Wishlist um, and Wayward Strand on Twitter and the socials and things like that. Yeah. yeah. I've played a, a bit of it, I think, at the uh, packs uh, that you uh, peeps were able to set up, and I, I very much enjoyed it. It was also uh, very chill and very sweet. And yeah, no, like I, I, I think everyone should have a look at, at Wayward Strand and, and see what games can be beyond, you know, the, the standard uh, uh, puzzle and, and action game fair. <laughs> yeah, we're really excited. There's a lot of very heartfelt and deep, meaningful stories in there. Um, well, we've been Maze and Taya. Um, and yeah, so. Yeah, uh, and also big so. shout out to Game Workers Unite. Um, definitely, if you're interested in all of these sort of contracts and accounting, and <laughs> um, but also you know activism, or just a better industry to work in, um, definitely join up with Game Workers Unite. You can go to gameworkers.com.au um, and. Uh, a little submission form you can join our discord and things like that um yeah yeah, yeah newsletters yeah uh and if you're interested in learning more about uh cooperatives um definitely feel free to hit me up in that discord or on twitter i'm a taya down um and uh or just uh message us at game workers unite and i'll be happy to talk with you or Mays will be more than happy i'm sure mm -hmm. to to answer questions as well about co-ops uh especially video game uh development co-ops we are always happy to help uh, others in our industry help to build a better industry thank you so much everybody